and welcome to our video on graphing parabolas using your CAS calculator. From the main screen on your CAS calculator we're going to use the function graph and table. You might remember using this when we looked at linear functions. It's the exact same, it's like a little app or a little program. So click on this one here and it opens up two windows in one. The top one is the one that lists uh, the equations that you're graphing and the bottom one shows you the actual graph. You can tell which um, window is highlighted by the blue box around the outside. So at the moment the box is around the top half of the screen which means that um, this window is active. If I want the graph part to be active I just click on the bottom half and the blue box goes around the bottom. Um, you, when you click on the different uh, windows you get a different menu up here so if you are trying to find one of the menu items that I show you and you can't see it, it may be that you have the wrong window selected. So as I click back, have a look up here and you should see the window, the menu items change. So there's the different menu items. Um, what we need to do first off is to type in our equation and the um, calculator already has the y equals written in. If there's a y1 written here which just means it's the first equation you're writing, this one's the second equation and so on and so on. So this is y equals, start typing your equation and the one we're going to use is x squared plus 4x plus 3. Once you finish typing that in you need to press uh, exe which is down here on my screen and when I press that you'll find that the equation is ticked. Another way if you didn't want to press AXE after um, typing in your equation you can just tick it yourself. Once it's ticked it means that it's going to show up down here but it's still not on our graph. We need to press this button here to make sure it shows up on the graph. So once it's ticked press the graph button and you can see it shows up down here. Our graph box has been highlighted to show this is the active window as well. So straight away you can see your graph here. If you'd like to move it up a bit, you can click anywhere on the screen with your stylus and move the graph around so you can see different parts. I'd like to show you the zoom function and there's a whole load of different options here. Um, I'll just show you a few of them. Zoom box, this first one here lets you draw a box around an area and then it zooms in on that particular area if you wanted to have a closer look at these x-intercepts. Zoom in and zoom out, I'm pretty sure you'd be okay with those. Zoom auto will um, try and find, the calculator tries to work out where it thinks the function uh, fits and it will try and make it fit the window perfectly. You can see it's kind of done an okay job but not perfect. Uh, zoom original will take you back to where we were right at the start. Zoom uh, previous will just take you one back. Zoom initialize will take you back to, now if you remember zoom original was where we started when I first typed this in. Initialize will take you back to the, um, the default uh, which is negative 7 to 7 and negative 4 to 4. So slightly different, initialize. Zoom quick is also useful when you know the type of function that you are graphing. And the ones we would be using would be the x squared function or the negative x squared function. Uh, this one is an x squared, it's not a negative parabola, it's positive, it's a happy smiley face. So we can click zoom quick x squared and it will try and fit it to the screen. Uh, zoom quick standard down the bottom will also take you back to a standard view. So you can use any of those to zoom in and out and make sure you can see different parts. Um, the next thing I'd like you to show you, the next thing I would like to show you um, are some of the other functions up here. So if we go to analysis and there's actually two ways of doing uh, most of these so I'll show you both ways and you can use either way whichever works for you. Um, if you click, oh sorry, before we do this, I want you to make sure that you can see the two x-intercepts and the y-intercept on your graph somewhere. So if you need to zoom to make sure you can see both of those, 
um, for example, this type of a graph. Uh, doesn't show me the y-intercept on the screen, so that's not what I'm looking for. Make sure you can see two x-intercepts and the y-intercept before you move on. doesn't have to be exactly the same as mine, but you need to see those three points there. You also need to make sure that your graph um, is highlighted, so this box here is highlighted. Um, analysis is where we're going, and if you click on Trace, it will move the pink across here, when you press the across arrow, it will move it slowly along and give you the coordinate points for each point that you're moving along. So if you wanted to read a particular point, you could do that using the trace function. When these, when you find a particular number here, it also shows up down here. And that can be useful, you might have noticed the first few, say this one here, uh, when these numbers are right on the axis it's hard to read them or if you had another graph here and it was going straight through it, that's when it can be useful to use the numbers down here. Um, if for some reason you can't read the numbers down here either, like this is a bit on the same axis and a bit hard to read, you can just click on them and it shows up down here to as many decimal places as that is, I haven't counted them. <laughs> so it's even more accurate than the, the number that's up here or the number that's up here. Next thing I'd like to show you is the G solve, which is graph solve, and it's going to find a part of the graph for us. So if we click on G solve, I'd like to start with root, which is the American word for an x-intercept and it will automatically come up with the leftmost x-intercept and you can see it here, x equals negative 3, y equals 0. Again, if you couldn't read this negative 3 for any reason, click on it, shows up down here. If we wanted the other x-intercept, we just need to press the across arrow and it showed up here, it's also here and you need to click it for it to show up at the bottom if you need to. Next on the list is minimum and maximum. This graph is a positive parabola, so it's going to have a minimum. So we can't find a maximum, but we can find the minimum. Click on minimum and it will give it to you there. Negative 2, negative 1. Bit hard to read. Luckily it's down here. And if you can't see it, click and it'll show up at the bottom. Next, the y-intercept is something that's useful for us. Here we go, 0, 3. 0, 3, um, and none of the other ones you need to worry about just yet. This very top one, x cal, y cal, if you have a y value and you want to find the x value, so say we wanted to find uh, where y equals 4, what x equals, so we're trying to find x where y equals 4, click OK and it will show you there, there's a 4 there for Y and this is what X equals, copied down here as well. Or if you wanted to go to the other value you could click across and it will give you the second value for X when Y equals 4. You can also do the opposite, G solve for the uh, calculate the x value, oh no that's one we just did, calculate the y value for the x value of 2. And it shows you here, it's off my graph, which was a bad example to choose, but it's, uh, it's still giving you the answer, x equals 2, y equals 15, it's just a little bit up here. Okay, finally I'd like to show you some of these buttons across the top here. So while we have the graph highlighted still, uh, the first button will bring up this Y1, Y2 list of equations and you'll find out soon where you might use that. Uh, don't worry about the second button just yet. 
Um, this I'll skip to this one actually. This one will uh, fit it automatically. So that's your auto zoom. Can be useful. Uh, this one here is your zoom box. Actually, I'm just going to go zoom previous so I can see a bit clearer. This one is your zoom box. Click it, draw your box, and it will zoom for you. This one here will give you, you can choose. So at the moment, we're going from x is negative 7 to x is 3. Maybe you want to just go from negative 5 to positive 1. So you can type in negative 5 to maximum of 1. The scale, this is just how much it goes up by each time. This one's going up by 1. So you could leave scale at 1, leave dot at whatever it has, because it will automatically update that. The Y minimum, we might go from negative 2 up to 6. So Y minimum, negative 2, maximum 6. And you've got your scale of 1 and your dot, leave that there. Click OK. And it will rescale, redraw your graph for you. So that was this button here. Over to the right hand side, this one here will give you um, it's the trace function, so click on it, you get your cross, and you can move across with your arrow to find any value. Maybe you want to try and find that x-intercept, and it will be useful to help you find that. This little arrow here is really important because it takes you, click on that, and it gives you a whole load of new uh, buttons. This one here is where y equals 0, so the x-intercept. There's your first x-intercept, x press across to get to your second one. These are all just different ways of, instead of using the analysis G-Solve menu, you can use these if you prefer these buttons. Um, your maximum and your minimum. This graph has a minimum. This button here um, will create a table for you, a table of values. Um, I might show you the table first. This one, don't worry about this one yet. Um, I'll, we'll go back and this button here is the table of values button. Click that one and you'll get all these X values and the associated Y value. If you go to this button here, you can choose to start your X values at, let's start at negative four and go all the way up to positive four. And instead of going up in point 0.1 every time, I'm just going to go up by 1s. So it'll go negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. You can set anything in there, which can be useful if you've got a uh, question on a test uh, which asks you to uh, fill in a table of values. You can just get the calculator to do it very quickly for you here. Once you've set the table input, click OK, and it will show you the table, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2 for X values. And you can scroll down to see the rest of it and it gives you the associated Y value for every one of those X values. Now, this is where it could be useful to have the list of your functions back again because you've got a table in the way. So while you have your graph highlighted, click on your Y1, Y2, because the graph is the one we want to keep, and it will bring up the Y1, Y2 there. Um, you have a load of white buttons uh, just below your screen, uh, in the middle of your screen, just uh, it's about here, I think, uh, right before the, the real buttons that you can click on your calculator. Um, this is what they should say, but yours are white in colour. And I want to point out the resize button. If you've got, uh, let's make sure the graph is selected. Click resize and it makes it big to go for the whole screen. Uh, but let's get the Y1, Y2 back again. There we go. Uh, while you have, oh, it doesn't matter which one you've got selected, but you can click swap and it will swap around so your equations are at the bottom and your graph is at the top. Some people prefer it like that. Some people end up with it on the wrong side and they don't know how to do it. Just click swap and it just swaps back again. Thank you for watching our video today on graphing parabolas.